Boy, there we go. Now we're on the air. Here we go. We're, we're on the TV. Let me do a few things here to get uh, stuff uh, working right here. Hold on. Ah, God, this is this is terrible. I have to always do this, and it it's not a great way to start the show. It's 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 a little a little way I can look at what's happening. There we okay. go. That's there. us. There we go. That's okay. Us. Anyway. Anyway, we're okay now. Now what I've got to do is I have to turn um, on, on uh, the uh, Skype. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. And live stream. Huh? Live stream. Live stream's on. Oh. Now what do you think this is? I don't know. It's live stream. I don't know. Yeah, it is. Um, but, it, uh, you know, it just gives me a chance to look at what we, how we, how we look. Okay? There we are. All right. Now I now what we do is we simply wait for somebody to call our program. You better call. Because the I'm lines back. Are, by the way, good show last night, folks. I'm uh, back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good show last. Oh, see, I have the Hong Kong. Did you see the your Hong yeah, Kong yeah. hat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's actually nice. Yeah. How much did this cost? I don't know because I bought all those little dollar no, magnets. No. What What is the currency over there? Hong Kong dollar. Uh, Hong Kong dollar. Yeah, HKD. Uh -huh. And what is its equivalent to the American dollar? Today? Yeah. I forget. Is there anybody going to call me? We're just sitting here waiting for people to call. This is ridiculous. Okay. Last night, Scott finally uh, just completely gave... What, what are you doing that for? You're, you're on the on TV. Oh. Here. <laughs> Jeez, oh my my She's checking her teeth out. I <laughs> something in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I, like the room was three thousand Hong Kong dollars a day, and it came out to maybe three hundred something. So it's about a thousand, three thousand Hong Kong dollars. Yeah, I, I could figure it out. Three hundred dollars a day. What would that no, be? About three fifty a day, something like yeah. that. And that included breakfast. Yeah, which was nice. Yeah, well, we could we could look it up, but you know, is anybody going to call us tonight? Wow, this is ridiculous. We're going out. We have a signal. People are probably watching. We have people uh, listening, and there's nobody calling. Is it the Jewish holidays yet? No. What I mean, Jewish holidays? The New Year's. Oh, is that coming up? Yeah. Oh. Might be. Yom Kippur. No, it's not Yom Kippur Rosh yet. Hashanah. No, it's not Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah comes yet. first. Yeah, but it's not Rosh Hashanah either. So anyway, so we're just sitting here. Is there a game? Huh? Is there a game? No, not that I know of. He was so cute. He was wait. He was following me with his um, find your friend, right? I actually used it and and found out where you were in Hong Kong. Did you? Yeah, I went hit find my friend, and there you were at that hotel. Wow. Uh, in the hotel. Well, somebody's calling. Hey, Phil. Yeah. Hey, welcome home. And, Thank you. And it's Phil, but we don't have a picture on you. But there, there he is. is. There he hey. is. There he is. I'm back. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. He, uh, your your buddy Alex there was uh, uh, talking about how good things were uh, having the whole place to himself. He could sleep across the bed. Uh, he could uh, leave clothes on the oh, floor. But I, I sleep. Across, I, I do that diagonal thing the minute I'm uh, out of the bed. Uh, he's out, she's out of the bed every morning. I immediately zip right over there. Right over. So does my little dog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there we go. Now, hello, uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff Stein is calling us. Hello, Jeff. Yeah. How you doing? Okay, turn on your. Is your camera on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go. As soon as uh, he came on, my camera went off. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. That sometimes there that happens. There we go. Oh, oh. And, and is that the lovely Frau? Yeah. It is. Jeff? Hello. Hi. Hi. It's Jeffrey's birthday. Happy so birthday. I know. I, I got so a little. He, this is what he wanted me to do for his birthday gift. Come in and say hi to Alex and all his friends. <laughs> <laughs> No, where's our well, picture, I'm Alex? Here. Well, no, we're 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 there. Don't worry. I don't see us. Well, you don't have to see. We us. see you. We <laughs> see you. You're looking good. Uh, uh, Happy birthday. We're, now Phil's having trouble. Phil, uh, I've got the camera on now. Uh, yeah, I can, can see, see Phil. Phil. Can you see Phil? We can't. Yeah. See, we can't, and hmm. we have to send out the TV feed so nobody can see Phil. Well, let me uh, re-Skype. You know, she'll re, uh, re Skype. Yeah. This, right, is the, this is still the, the, the negatives of Skype. 
Uh, Can't you do it FaceTime? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no, FaceTime doesn't do groups. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so how you... Am I on correctly? So, yeah, can, can, uh, you look fine. I see, I mean, you never can ask this of a woman, but you can ask this of a guy. What? So how old are you today, Jeff? <laughs> 71 years old. 71 years old. A child, so far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Still young. You know. Um, Sounds like a good age like to I'm me. 71, no, I can't believe you're 71. That's crazy. But I have to act that way. No, you don't. Well, you don't. How, long have you two, how long have you two been married? 30 years next month. Wow. wow. And I'm, I'm number two, actually, but that's all right. I'm number four. Chances <laughs> are. Wow. <laughs> Gotta love it. And he's my number three. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. He's my number one. About that. It sounds more like the ways you eliminate waste from your body. Than <laughs> <laughs> so did you have a birthday cake? Did you have a birthday cake? Stick in. You have to stay in the picture. All right. Was there a birthday cake? Well, I got to tell you that, that Pam is absolutely a, a crazy Democrat. Oh, yeah. I'm all and in with you. I'm all in with you, Alex. Super supporting. Hillary, even though I think she used to be for Bernie. I was. Yeah. Yeah, but look at look at what it, what the options are now. That's it. I mean, it's really, it's just, there's, it's, no it's, there's no options. There's no options. She's very pragmatic. And I think Hillary's smart, and she I is. Just, her judgment. She's <laughs> a hard worker, and she's taking a yes. lot of Bernie's. I mean, on the platform, yes. they yep. she agreed yep. on a lot of stuff. Yeah, she's and I come think she very less. Yep. As time goes on, so I, that's good. I yeah. agree. I just hope that the people that say they're going to vote for a third party don't do Wake it because up. that's going to kill. Yeah. That's well, now the guy on the other side of the screen. I know. I was just going to say, but Phil would like that. Yeah, he would love they it. They voted for the third party. Yeah. yeah it's, as long as it isn't Republicans voting for a third party. I hear you I had a guy on that. with, uh, with, uh, with. Uh, uh, Damien? Da no. With, 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 with Jack. I always have to remember his, his, Real his, name. his air name. Uh, uh, no, Jack Bishop. On what the did intersection. I have? Your friend. Who, who oh, he, yes, Steve. He was, he, uh, even today, when I talked to Jack, was apoplectic about this guy. What happened? Uh, Steve is a very intelligent guy. And, uh, no, I hear he was, from if, if, what, if, if what I heard he said uh, uh, sounded very stupid. It sounded oh. like a, <laughs> it sounded, no, it sounded like a white guy who, had no way of understanding what it was like to grow up black in this country. Well, I can tell you that... Uh, and then to make with, things even worse, he said he was Jewish. Yes, he is. <laughs> and he's an Orthodox Jew, and the reason he's not calling in tonight is it's the Sabbath, and he davens and does the whole uh, the whole thing. Yeah, well, if you're listening... Well, he can't listen, can No, he, he won't be listening. He can't but listen. he's actually he's donating a Torah to his uh, congregation. It's their first Torah. And uh, Wait, but why his do you father call it passed Torah? away a It's a Torah. Ago. Torah. It's a Torah, not a Torah. You hey. call it a Torah. It's not hard people call it a Torah. Well, really? well, I mean, I know what you're talking about. Right? People you know. call it Torah sometimes. Yeah. It's that, it's Torah. A, it's that, uh, that, uh, that little scroll that I mistook once in a bathroom for toilet paper. It's <laughs> <laughs> a big scroll on parchment. And uh, <laughs> a piece of toilet. Yeah, okay. so I'm going a hard to the uh, donations uh, to the ceremony on Sunday. Uh, he's he's a very intelligent guy. Well, I, he's not apparently uh, up to a point because he's well, voting for Trump. How smart are you yeah, if you're voting for Trump? Jack, Jack or, uh, doesn't like, uh, you know, he had a hard time arguing against him because uh, my friend Steve doesn't get mad. You know, he, he doesn't uh, he doesn't raise his voice. He answers the question. He's extremely intelligent. And, uh, you know, when you when you get someone of that caliber, it's easy to uh, to to tip off a, uh, a liberal because they work from emotion. There's no fact. There's no uh, there, there's no there's nothing but just raw emotion. There's no logic. Uh, and that's and that's why liberals get mad at conservatives. Here, Alex. <laughs> uh, yeah. oh, Jeff here we is, go. Jeff is going. <laughs> what about those crazy angry guys on the radio? They're conservative, and they are always mad at everybody. Yeah. Yeah, but not Steve. Steve is. Uh, oh. you know, he's he's not that kind of guy. 
Uh, and he's had a, an illustrious police career as a homicide detective, as a DA investigator, as a sexual assault investigator, uh, as an evidence tech. Uh, I spent almost 20 years working with him. He, uh, we partnered together because we were only two Jews in the department. <laughs> and so, so what did you do? Uh, what did you do? Go out and create sex crimes so people could investigate? No, them? Is no. That what your uh, job when he was, was a sex crimes <laughs> investigator. He got me a position in the detective bureau, plain clothes, so that I could um, uh, work <laughs> on cases to free up. Uh, the regular investigators that would work on rapes and so forth. So I'd work on. So in other words, in other words, you're what we would call right. Rob, Rob Alfano just joined us. Rob, wouldn't he be considered? Uh, say it's serious. A uh, um, um, producer, an, an intern. <laughs> yeah, kind of. You'd be an intern. Yeah, I was unpaid too. But, yeah. uh, well, but who, nobody pays interns. So what I what I did was I would call and follow up. Uh, for instance, in the halfway houses, they uh, if a kid didn't come home by ten o'clock at night the halfway house had to make a missing persons report. So what I would do is I would follow up on these reports. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd close them. I'd go into the Department of Justice uh, computer, and I would write a small report and say, Okay, oh, this is getting boring. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, that freed a lot of time for the uh, other uh, detectives to, to work go out and kill this. black people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, we, we just go after talk shows, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it was a service that was very, very good. And I, and I uh, uh, used to like to go with them to serve the high-risk search warrants on Tuesday mornings. Uh, so if we got there at 7 in the morning, that's when they went out and served the high-risk search warrants. What's high-risk search warrant? Going to a place where there are no donuts? No, it's uh, <laughs> the black team would go in. Uh, uh, take out everybody, uh, okay. set, them, set them down in a, in a place where I would watch the people until they could decide who had the dope and who, uh, you know, had the warrant for his arrest and so forth. Who, and who, who, had, the, who had the dope? You mean you busted drug, or, drug people? Yes. Hmm. How, how horrible is that, folks? Well, you know, victimless, how victimless uh, crime. Crack crack so you were in the, huh? How horrible is crack cocaine? Yeah, it's horrible. You know, it's, it's terrible. Yes, but it is, it's not a police problem. It's a medical problem, and it, no, should be so, it should be handled as such. That's the way you take care of the problem. Not when it's killing the people of the community, and that's exactly what, what I'm it's saying doing. is, again, a medical problem, not a legal problem. Well, it's a medical problem for you, but you no, don't do it. It's a, me it's a medical problem that has to be dealt with. It's a medical you, problem. You have to look upon. You have to look upon drug. Drugs commit crimes. Sometimes. Drugs, yeah. it, drug, it, it, these guys were making millions of dollars. No, we off know all well, of heart of, we, of, of people yes. who couldn't afford it, getting them addicted to drugs like crack cocaine. No, the society got them addicted, addicted to those drugs. Uh, you, you yeah, can, people, people, you people, want, people, people, people use those fun. drugs out of out of depression. <laughs> Out of trying to escape their environment in a, a by using drugs. Yeah, but these are the people also that were committing crimes to go buy the drugs from the drug dealers. Well, that's why you have to make all this shit legal and deal with it as a medical problem. It isn't legal? No, but you're 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 no. You know why it isn't legal? Because if we made it legal all these drugs tomorrow and then started saying we will deal with them as a medical problem, you fucking police wouldn't have jobs. That's and cool. it is it is part of the of it's part it, listen there is more money being made off drugs by people who interdict drugs than all the drug dealers in the world it's true and look at all the uh, the uh, jails the private profit jails it, it's not just cops up. it's not just cops it's lawyers it's judges it's medical facilities it's doctors treatment it, it's it's people who make guns i mean it's the and whole jails. and jails and you want to talk about an industry that would well, be if tomorrow we legalize drugs in this country all, the, the economy would fall on, out from underneath that, You've what I consider business. What it does to people and their families when the, I person understand that. Drugs, I understand sleep. that, but you're not going to solve the problem by arresting them. You're going to solve the problem by dealing with it medically and dealing with it as a medical problem. Wait, let too. me finish. Huh? Socially, too. And, and a social problem because the other way, you're going to have people not coming forward and saying, I need help. We went after the dealers. Uh, the, 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 how uh, many of those dealers were uh, users? Uh, they weren't users. They were dealers. No. How do you? You're going to say some of them weren't users. They weren't dealing just to be able to get enough cocaine. money to do the drug. 
they might have been doing cocaine, but I didn't, you know, those, those uh, people like uh, Peanut, I remember when we arrested Peanut, we took his Jaguar, and, and the guy was making millions of dollars. This is in the early 80s, and he was making millions of dollars, and he had, uh, you know, he had a network. They're gangsters, and they had a network of dealers all over the city. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, these, these people are nothing more than leeches on society. And uh, what they're doing is they're killing. You, you worry about black people, they're killing their own people. I can put them, out of, it, I can put them, out, of, I can put them out of business tomorrow by making all that stuff legal. Right. Yeah, but it's, it, no, it, that's it, so. It, I don't need you I, as a cop to stop them. All I need to do yeah. is to make it legal. Yes, Jeff. I seem to remind me that in Portugal, they made this decision to make uh, drugs uh, legal and be more of a medical problem. And they had some pretty good success with that. Oh, yeah. 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 Scandinavian this isn't working, so why not give that a try? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, well, the fact is, the fact, that route. The fact <laughs> is, you, 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 by keeping drugs illegal, you yeah. put the profit in them. And thank you very much for making a profit to all those drug dealers by going out and arresting people and, and raising, raising the price on the drugs. You know, I mean, it is, it, the way we've handled drugs in this country is just so stupid, it's ridiculous. Just very recently, they tried to remove um, marijuana from being a heavy-duty drug. Like Class and, A or whatever. Yeah, and, and the association of private <laughs> jails came in and convinced them not to do that because most of their population are marijuana people. Do you know who the big people fighting the marijuana legalization in California are? The Prison Guard right. Association. Oh, yeah, same reason. So Keeps tell me busy. how the Prison Guard Association uh, has anything to do with, with the drug dealers. Well, I, if, I if it weren't for know, the drug dealers... I don't know whether or not uh, that's correct. I saw yeah. a story on that. Sure you did. I've seen a lot of stories too, and you don't. You don't want to. You don't want to believe it. You just don't want to believe it. The fact is, the biggest cause of the drug problem in this country are the cops and the laws against it, and and not dealing with it in a rational way. I agree. In places like England, they consider it a medical problem. In the Scandinavian countries, they consider it a medical problem. Yes, a Mrs. Pam. Mrs. Stein. I, what was your first it's name Pam. again? Pam. It's Pam. Pam. Hey, Pam. Pam. But isn't it? It's not really the cops, isn't it? The legislators who make yeah. it illegal. Well, because the uh, who make yeah, who, you know, they they make the because, laws because the lobby cops groups like, like the prison associations yeah. come and convince well, them. Well, as I said, they put they're, money they're, into they're, their uh, elections. I'll give you an example of more money interdicting drugs than uh, 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 than, than the sale of drugs. Um, what was it? Uh, yeah, the uh, FDA or the uh, the drug enforcement people, DEA, offered the cartels in uh, where Columbia. is it in Columbia, Columbia. Uh, fifteen? What was it? Fifteen billion dollars a year if they would stop. Shipping drug? No, no, no. They use fifty. I, I now I got it straight. They, they were they were they were sending, sending into this country fifteen billion dollars worth of drugs a year. We were spending seventeen billion interdicting those drugs <laughs> when we could have just, given the Colombians give fifteen billion dollars, bought the drugs, and dumped them in the ocean. If that's ecologically sound, it's, it's an industry. It's like it's like the yeah. you know it's just like war, right? It's an industry. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the big thing about the problems that we have at the border of this country, it isn't uh, it's sending more border guards down there and building a wall and all of that. The main drug coming across, 90% of the drugs, is uh, marijuana. Just make marijuana legal in the United States and you won't have people killing each other at the border anymore because you will have taken the profit margin out of, out of drugs. Right. Look what happened when we, when we did prohibition, right? It brought organized crime and, you know, and we went one way from the other, right? Le alcohol was legal. They tried the experiment to, to make it illegal and then they legalized it again. So why not try an experiment where you legalize marijuana? Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't even an experiment on legalizing alcohol. I mean, alcohol, look, alcohol was a real problem when they came up with prohibition. And you know who came up with prohibition? wasn't a bunch of religious people or the women's women's, women's temperance. temperance union isn't and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it was it was aligned with uh uh 
the uh, women's right to vote. So the fact was that the, the, when it went, when it got it, it was it made illegal. Alcohol was a real problem in this country. Yeah. I mean, there were like five bars on every street, and the husbands were coming home drunk every night, beating up their wives. I mean, it was a very pernicious problem. And one has to admit that yes, they made it illegal for a while until about what 13 years later, I think it was, they turned it around and made it legal again. But drinking and the way in which America drank changed completely after that point, okay? But in the meantime, making something illegal, perfect example of making people a fortune. Al Capone became very wealthy. All these drug run, or, uh, booze runners became very wealthy. The Kennedys, okay? That's <laughs> true. Um, you know, so I mean, uh, you've got to just look at history and, and know that you don't solve a problem by making it illegal. Yes, now, Bill. They made marijuana legal in Colorado, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, a few people are making all the money mm -hmm. with these dispens uh, dispensaries. Yeah. And uh, what uh, what's been the uh, what's been the end result in Colorado as well, far? Well, they as they also sell groceries in my neighborhood, and only a few people are making money off that. I mean, in total population, how many people are the entrepreneurs? Yeah, but they're making they're making millions. So, so what? Like so what? So what? So what? So what? And that's a question. But where? Yes. You know what? what how has that uh, how has that changed or made any benefit to the people there? Uh, the, it 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 supplied a lot of tax money to the uh, to the coffers. Yeah. Uh, which is going uh, they say is going to help the state a great deal. Pam, you had your hand up. I'm just just thinking, Phil. I, I'm sure there are some people that are making a lot of money, but all the people working in dispensaries, all the people transporting it around, all the people helping to grow it. I'm sure there's jobs there too. Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's also jobs in security because they they deal with yes. There's a, that that yeah. hurt. There's a lot of security. Well, they have a bank issue also because the, yeah, the right. That's the why they government. have security. Yeah, right. The banks, yeah. banks. What? But the, what they finally did, I think, is a it, state bank. Now they no, it's not a state bank, but it's credit union. Credit union. Uh, uh, using credit they unions. Can now to, take the money. They needed some place that they could put their money. They literally had to buy safes, huge safes, right. just to put the money in right. and then have guards stay there overnight to protect yeah, it. But crazy. they had no, with everything they did, they had to pay in cash, yeah. salaries, That's everything. Bizarre. If you're gonna allow the industry, you gotta let them bank. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, hey guys, I'm gonna say good night. Okay. Good night. Good, good night, dear. Nice okay. Happy birthday. <laughs> good to have you back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think it's a waste to see your people sitting around stoned on <laughs> What? You know, it's, 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 waste, it's a waste of time. It, 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 well, it's a waste of time for you. She's probably going to go and smoke a joint right now to put her to sleep. <laughs> that's, you know, why should you impose that? I agree. I, that's, if, that's perfect. If you think it's a waste of time, then yeah. you have the, you know, that's what America's about, right? If I want to have a, a scotch, I'll have a scotch. If you don't like scotch, don't have scotch. If you don't like to drink, have Coke. So I don't understand. Listen, you know, I, I, I don't smoke. I don't understand that, that rationale for it. I really don't smoke pot anymore. I, I don't mean, like pizza. Make it illegal. Yeah, but I don't smoke pot anymore. I just kind of outgrew it, I guess, you know. Yeah. But I, I didn't ever stop it out of any particular uh, dislike of it. I think it is one of the most benign drugs around and uh, uh, is a, a great social um, uh, uh, situation. I think it's certainly booze is a terrible. I mean, horrible. Well, personally, I don't like drug use, you know, uh, and hey, uh, well, but you, you know something? Marijuana is not a drug. Marijuana is a plant, you know, a drug it, comes in pill good. form, you know, or well, heroin's a plant, too, you know, no, heroin is not a plant. It starts out as uh, it starts you know, out as a plant, eat. but it is then uh, it is then processed. OK, right. marijuana really isn't processed just except dry. to let it just dry out. Yeah, it's the drying process. Yes, but no, no, no. <laughs> Her heroin is actually heroin is uh, the the bottom of the vat for making morphine. That's really what it is. That's why they used to call it junk. It's 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 uh, the the lowest form of that particular drug. Morphine is you know which I've had it when I was in the hospital. Anybody else here have morphine at any point? No. Oh, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. I, maybe I did, but I... They said, when they, every, they would remember. come into me and say, how, how much are you hurting from one to five? I'd go five. 
<laughs> you know, always say five, always say ten, whatever the high number They're is. Stupid. I, I would always say a one. Oh, you know? no, no. You tell them the highest that, number possible because they enough. give you the highest number. <laughs> and uh, it was, it, you know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't get hooked because when you're in pain, it goes directly to helping the pain, you know. It, so uh, let, let me ask you this uh, on my friend Steve. By the way, we could what use some more callers, thing? folks, if there are any of you out there that would deign to call us. But, you know, it's a nice so crowd what, here. What caused Jack to get uh, apoplectic, as you put it? I don't know. You'd have to have Jack tell you himself. I, I heard the conversation. You know, I didn't hear it because he couldn't hear it because it was yeah. he was having the technical problem we've been dealing with, uh, you know. Did you get the things I sent you? Yeah, but I still don't understand it. Really? Yeah, it yeah. doesn't make sense to me. simple. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll look it over more later. But yeah. the, the, I'm going to hop off. Oh, okay, it's been Pam. lovely speaking to all of you. Good, good talking to you, Pam. I'm really enjoying spending yeah. time. Do, do this again, you know. He gave him. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah. All right, take okay, care. Bye. Good night. Good. Yeah. Anyway, we need more callers, folks. We just lost Pam, okay? <laughs> So uh, give it two for you know. Give I us mean. call and Scott. I think has football tonight, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, no. Will Will his wife let him back? Oh, on I, it? I don't know. Last <laughs> night, you it, was it? Who was it that got him upset? Uh, it wasn't me. <laughs> who was, <laughs> it was it? Oh, it was Patrick. Patrick, I heard that. Yeah, and <laughs> and he went. Uh, he kind of went uh, and went apoplectic. I don't, and, I don't and know. then he said, "I got to go, get off. My wife doesn't like me getting this riled up." Yeah, well, he he got caught. And usually, you know, I I always figured he was fooling around, and that was just his shtick. Uh, but uh, I guess he got so upset, his wife saw him get that upset, and, and thought that uh, you know he was going to have a stroke. So, <laughs> well, this is this show is bad for your health. I know that is a personal fact. But you know, but um, uh, all I'm, all I'm saying here is that I think that we for years have been very immature in our handling of the drug problem in this country and i think we have created more of a problem than you need have we we didn't learn anything from prohibition is what the problem is the prohibition <clears throat> should have taught us that you know when you illegalize something like that rather than uh then take it into a uh, into an area where you you're trying to socialize people off of something I think you know. you're being short-sighted. I don't think you're looking at what it does to people's families, Look, what it does to people's career. No, no. You know and something? I think I think crack. you're the one that's being being no, even silly if they don't about this. No, oh, you're you're buying, you're buying the uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You're buying the stereotypical uh, movie idea of what it's drug solid. abuse is and the fact it's is solid. are you going to say that people who smoke marijuana then are are big drug abusers and are some harming them. themselves some of them are no they you aren't know, i don't are. do you I have, have a friend have you have you have a friend that's been smoking every day for 40 or 50 years is he still alive yeah he's, he's okay fine. well he then functions in society he owns real estate okay you know, he's so, a good guy and i consider him a close so friend. how is marijuana bad for him not for him. Okay. I, the, well, you know, so. Fine. That, that, it's just. Yeah. Let it's me, uh, like Jeff. Jeff had his hand up. Well, I was looking around here. Weren't you uh, in Colorado uh, last year, and you? Uh, That's right. Had the opportunity to buy a bunch of. Uh, That's oh, right. did, you did go to Colorado. That's you? right. Into one of the states. So are you? Uh, Edible too. Are you in trouble now because of that? Or? Oh, I'm. I'm. I'm about to default on my mortgage, and you know the car is getting taken away. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it's are the a, police coming to your door every day. And most people look at it as a recreation. It's the same as. It's the same as I. I'll have a brandy. Mm -hmm. I'll have a, you know, it depends on what it is that you're, you, you know, you feel like in that particular day. Uh, it's, we, uh, alcohol is far more dangerous to your body. Cigarettes are far more dangerous well, to your body. Of course. So why, why is, why, why pick on marijuana? <clears throat> well, I, I don't know. Marijuana is a pretty benign thing. Uh, it's probably a gateway to other drugs. Oh, the gateway. A gateway? How is that? How is that, Phil? Phil, that's that's another myth. <laughs> that's another myth. Hey, milk was a gateway to heroin. Yes, it is. 
you know, because yeah, everybody I uh, ever know, uh, uh, ever known who's, who's a heroin oh. addict started with milk. That's right. right. Yeah, they were lactose intolerant, and it's usually Jews and Chinese people that do you, uh, do you know, have a problem with milk. Do, do you know the only thing that ever, in any way, shape, or form, makes it a uh, uh, a gateway drug uh -huh. is the fact, again, that it's illegal. And so you have to go to a subset of our society in order to score your marijuana and those same people may be dealing in other drugs now, and that's how it's a gateway drug if you, you don't think it lessens your uh, it makes you less uh, it makes the tolerance uh, you know it breaks down your inhibitions once you start no, doing marijuana, marijuana then you have less inhibition marijuana about have you how much, how much and, pot and alcohol you, doesn't break down your inhibitions why do you think so many people drink in social settings? Why do you think so many people drink and drive? Uh, because they're too you, cheap to take a taxi. Come on. You can make the same argument. You, you're not making any argument. You always, that you you always try to come back from a logical question with a joke. No, it's not. You know, I mean, if people would just think about what it would cost them if they got pulled over as a drunk driver, uh, but they, they are short-sighted and they make bad decisions when they drink. People make bad decisions all the time yeah. about all kinds of things, right? Uh, but that wasn't the point, right? The point was that you're, the points that you're making, you could make every one of them about alcohol. Yes. And, so and is alcohol legal? Why aren't you, uh, you know, do you drink? Not much. Okay, so why don't you feel the same way? Let's just... I let's, don't want alcohol either. I okay, don't so let's it. just outlaw it. But damn it, let's just you know, do away with it. All right. <laughs> I guess I can talk you into that faster than the way around. All right. I've known a lot of people who've done a lot of different kinds of drugs. And uh, uh, I had one person very close to me who was uh, hooked on, uh, on heroin. Uh, a terrible, horrible drug. Uh, it, it, you know, and do you know how this person started doing drugs? Are you ready for this? Marijuana. No, what started her doing heroin? No. She went to Narcotics Anonymous meetings. <laughs> well, and she met people there who knew how to score heroin. And when they would take, when they were doing again, they would want to take other people down with them. And so it was a Narcotics Anonymous. Okay. Well, I, I knew her, and uh, you know, I knew that she, you know, would do lewds or uh, uh, marijuana and, and 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 other things i didn't know well she no it heroin. turns out that the major cause of uh, of her uh, of of heroin usage it turns out is me really uh, yeah because it well, happened to be an ex-wife of mine i know okay uh, and I, and I, that little event cost me about three hundred thousand dollars sending her to one rehab center after another those phony maloney pieces of shit and one, uh, what was that the one in Ross? What the rehab center? No, oh. no, uh, there were tons of them oh. uh, that she went to over the years. But bad. anyway, all I'm saying is, is that uh, brilliant. She was funny. Yes. Yeah, it took all that away, uh, you know. But she, the first night I met her, okay, uh, she was high on, I think, Valium, okay. Yeah. So she was always a drug user, and it meant, if you ask any heroin addict what, how they got to heroin, they won't tell you that yeah, this drug led to that drug led to that drug. They will simply say, I tried all these drugs, and this was the first one that ever did it for me. Mm. Okay? It's the way, place you wind up if you're looking for, for that something. That gateway drug. That gateway, No. <laughs> but all the others become a gateway only because you try all the others to see if that's, you know, where it's going to wind up. Hi, Tony. Big drug user. Tony Magno, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very uh, not. Right. Wait, have you ever done a drug, Tony? I, Tony, it's pretty high. I'm, 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 I'm a very honest person. I never did any drugs. I've known plenty of people who have. Tony? And I've never been actually tempted to do it. I don't know why. I occasionally drink. Tony, you sent me a Facebook photo, and I saw how high you were today. Uh, and those are like mezzanines, like, I guess, the seats. So they're like 50, 60 bucks. The seats at the ball game. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of, you know, they're not all the way down. Like you well, hey, uh, but, but, since, it's, since it's Friday night, uh, uh, I don't want to say. Since it's Friday night, it's TV night. Let me see if I can reach over here. For yeah, I never again. did any drugs. I got, a, I got a new hat, not this cap from 
from yeah. Hong Kong, which I cherish because it was given to me by my, my, my fine wife. Okay. Oh, you know what I'm saying, Tanya Alex? If I was to do a drug, I would want to do yeah. LSD. Okay. I, I've always been enamored with that. I don't know why. Been there, There's done musicians that. took me in the right. Yeah. I always said, I gotta try this. Hold on a second. That's like on my bucket list. Some, it, tell me, what do you think of the new hat? I like it. You look like Rocky. You're like, you know, he's going to kill you, Rock. No, my uh, bird just started. Yeah. My hat reminds me of the show a little bit. Huh? It reminds me of a different color, but it reminds me of the hat you used to wear on the TV show. Yeah, well, no, this is different. This is, um, I don't know, this is... This to begin with, you can't do that with it. You can't oh, bring yeah. the brim it's down. Or anything. Well, you got the gel cut me. You got to collect money from people. Alex. Anybody remember a comedian who was on Burl S. Comedian that was did a kids' TV show in the early days of television called Pinky Lee? Mm-hmm. Uh, Didn't he wear a hat like this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you you ever done drugs in your life? I mean, um, well, one of the uh, drugs that I I guess you'll call it a drug is marijuana. So. Uh, alcohol and the worst one that I had was cigarettes. Yeah. But uh, as I told you guys, I had a lot of heart problems, so I stayed away from a lot of drugs because I figured I was about ready to did, pass did, out anyway. It, with the heart problems, did you, did your doctors recommend any of these illicit drugs, like marijuana or something like that? No, no, not particularly. Did the heart problems? But I do know that after surgery. The drugs that they gave you post-operatively was terrible uh, in the fact that uh, you would have uh, terrors, uh, scares. Uh, you what kind of drugs? Kind of what kind rip of, everything out of your arms. What kind of drugs do they give you? I don't know. Because it couldn't have been like morphine because they did that with me in the, in the hospital when I had no, my I kidney had stone. And I got to tell you, I wasn't going to rip anything out. I was, yeah. was going to say more and more. <laughs> you know? no, you're more you're not sure. How long were you on those drugs, Jeff? Was it long enough to have an addiction? or? No, I don't think so. But I was a resilient uh, after the surgery, maybe a couple of days or something. That's like it. That. Okay. Were they like. You know, because they. But, uh, you know, 40 years ago, they gave you a lot more drugs and you stayed in the hospital a lot longer. Yeah. Which yeah. meant that you got the drugs, let's for say, for a whole week. As yeah. compared to today, you often have surgery and you're home tomorrow. Yeah, they get you out of bed like, you know, right. 12 hours after surgery. They want you walking. Oh, they want you out of that hospital. We yeah. need, they, need the, uh, they need the room. I the talked to somebody hey. yeah. today about a guy who uh, had a uh, surgery. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had to have, have a valve uh, replaced. Yeah. And the guy at Yale said, you know, who does this kind of surgery? He says, I only got about one out of out of uh, 100 chances of this surviving, this guy, who happened to be like 97 years old. Right. And they did that kind of operation on a guy that age? Yes, they do oh. that these days. What was his insurance company? I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I think he went to a gambling place, but anyway, he survived. Wow, it's amazing. Wow, that's yeah. that is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and the last time I had that procedure, I was home. I, I woke up from that, and and I said, I feel so good. Yeah, I mean, nobody ever thinks about you coming out of surgery and you feel great. But that, I'll tell you, I, what stuff. I found when I came out of the whole thing in the hospital, and, and mind you, I mean, what I had was like sissy stuff compared to you, Jeff. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like, it's like you go to jail and they say, what are you in for? And you go, um, downloading torrents, you know, and they, the murderer <laughs> looks at you like you're a wimp, you know. Uh, uh, but the thing is that uh, I, you know, I spent four and a half days in the hospital, and uh, four and a half days of those, I was on morphine. I was on, on Dilaudid, really. Mm -hmm. I was on morphine downstairs. When they sent me upstairs, they gave me Dilaudid, which is, is really no difference. They do the same thing. Do you know that what you had was an outpatient procedure, and the only reason they kept you in the hospital was to punish you? Probably, probably. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you, I uh, I didn't mind my uh, my time in the hospital, mind you. But yeah. mm -hmm. I always thought that when you went to the hospital for four and a half know. days, you got out, you'd feel really rested. 
Mm. And it, it was the opposite. It took me weeks to get over that. And they say it takes well, about three days for every day you're in the hospital to recover from just being in the hospital. They wake you up every couple of hours. Every, oh, you know. no, no, here's what she would do. She, the nurse ratchet, yeah. you know, she would uh, wake me up at uh, three in the morning and say, it's time to do your blood draw. And I'm going... I, I'm on this morphine sleep. It's wonderful in and out, the dreaming wonderful dreams. And now you're sticking a needle in my arm at three o'clock in the morning to do my blood draw. They couldn't get the blood not waking you up. You know, take it from uh, a uh, hose that be stuck in your in your hand. Or no, something. no, no. That that's for feeding you stuff. Like they had to constantly feed me a saline solution because they were trying to clear out the stone. Yeah, you know, and then then when they weren't feeding me that, they would. That's when they would stick the morphine or the dilaudin in there. Yes, yes, Jeff. Did you get your five o'clock wake up to uh, have them take do your blood test? No, no, it was a three o'clock. I just said it was three o'clock. Three o'clock in, in the morning. Yeah, um, I, Mr. I Schwarzman, time for your blood draw. Oh, good. Right. You know, are you awake? But then again, Not I now. think I must have slept for four and a half days. I mean, because I had those drugs in me, and I just, I, I, you know. Well, you had a very painful. Well, but I, I love telling the story, but they, what happened was they said, well, we're waiting on a room for you. And finally they got me a room, and they sent me upstairs. And they say, you're very lucky you're, you're, you're in a place where you get free television, and there was this big screen TV there, right? Like all the guys have in prison, you know, if you believe the stories. Uh, big screen TV, and uh, it's free. And I went, oh, any channel you want to watch. Yeah. That's what we give you here in palliative care. And I'm going, wait the fucking minute think. here. <laughs> palliative care is for people who have terminal cancer, right? Mm -hmm. And they say, right. I said, are you not telling me something? No, and they said, no, we just didn't have room for anywhere else. Lucky you. And my, even my doctor who came by to see me, my personal doctor, because he knows when he comes by he can bill me, uh, said, uh, uh, you're very lucky you're in palliative care. He said, you really scored here because anywhere else you'd have to pay for the TV. And, and you also got used to it. That's why you like to eat all the jello you can get. No, but the problem was the other people in palliative care. That's not right. One yeah, of them was awful. making horrible noises all night. Yeah. That's, that's terrible. Man. Yeah, I had to finally tell the nurse, can you shut that guy up? I mean, I, I hit some radio he was playing or something. Uh, you yeah. know, he wasn't a good palliative care pal. And the doctor was actually happy you were up there. Huh? You think I, the doctor could do like that? That's a spin. Really? It's like telling you. It's like telling a child. You know, you spin like giving them some medicine. Ooh, you're lucky to have this medicine. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky to be in palliative care. Yeah, that's a learn that from the Democrats. That's why they give you the free TV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard what Phil said about the Democrats. What did you say to me again? They like to fight with the Republicans. Oh no, they like to fight with that. Hey, I had a, uh, an interesting thing happen to me yesterday. I went to see my therapist, and things are going really well. So we, I had some extra time to fill, and he says to me, "Have you ever heard of Bilderberg?" Phil, you're going to be interested. Yes, I have. You have heard of. I've it's heard of Bilderberg European too. But... Version of the Trilateral Commission. Oh, I don't it's know. not necessarily true. He sent me on a, um, he sent me on a mission when I went home because I'm fascinated by this stuff, and he told me to watch. The Obama Deception. Yeah. Have you seen it? No. I recommend it. The You'll Obama love it. Deception. The Obama I Deception. If, you, if you're an Amazon Prime, well, I got Prime. I am able to watch it. According to this video, yeah. Obama and Hillary Clinton are both members of the Bilderberg Group, and and Obama is a shill for. Yeah. The Bilderberg Group. He is carrying out plans, and the next phase of the plan supposedly is the merging of the United States, Canada, and Mexico as yeah. one one world government. Yes. And it's all yeah, yeah, I thought Bilderberg was a a, a toy for it's kids sitting. where you get these blocks and you build stuff. Yeah. No. 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 But the Bilderbergs 
our uh, city uh, it is where they have the meeting. It's, a, I think, a yearly meeting. They it's have all over the world. Chant it's a secret deal. They had it right yeah. here at Chantilly a couple of years ago, right here at the Marriott. And they showed you that they, got, they, they clear the hotel out. They had these guys sneaking in with cameras. You got to watch this, this Obama. Yeah, watch Did you, you go to the thing? I, I watched it last night. And I got to tell you, I wanted to put a bullet in my head about a third of the, two thirds of the way through of it. But the, only prob the only reason why I didn't was because they were making, this movie was made in, I think, 2009. And it was released in 2010. It was during Obama's first, um, uh, you know, term in office. And supposedly, this was all supposed to happen while he was the president, the, the North America Union of, uh, you know, everything and how yeah. we're moving the world towards this one world government. And they keep playing back as far as uh, as the two Bushes, you know, uh, right. senior and junior uh, yeah. making making speeches using the world, you know, one, one world, world government, government, one world, right. you know, the new world order. Right. Right. Uh, and that all comes. From the yeah, this is all the bullshit that Phil believes. Well, I tell you what, it, it, if you watch this video, it'll have you believing it because they show you so many, so much, you know, now you got to think, were they taking some of this out of context or what? It's, it's worth watching. Uh, it, it, like I said, my, my, I was telling my wife last night, I was sitting there watching it and I was like, you know, this is really depressing. She goes, and your therapist, everything's going well. Your therapist wants to keep you in therapy. So he, he <laughs> made you watch this. It's depressing. Now, until where, where, I did, where did you that see this? Where did you see it? It's on Amazon Prime. Oh, is it really? What is, what is it called? It's called The Obama Deception. Oh, boy. You got to watch it. You well, got to watch it. I'm telling you. It's worth it telling you about the uh, the video that's on the uh, John Birch Society website sure. about the Trilateral Commission and the Council on Foreign Relations and they talk about the same thing. These and people are members of these groups. Right, right. Pictures of Hillary Clinton coming out of a Bilderberger meeting and she will not she will not you know, a reporter went up to her at one of her book signings and asked her about it they and they shuffled him away. They will not talk I mean. about it. There's so much that when you watch this, you go, gee, you know, is, can this really be true? Can this really be happening? Are we all being deceived? They say there hasn't been a president since JFK. He was the last real American president. That wasn't influenced by this. And they killed him, too. The rest but, of but, them are all shills. You cannot be. And they're worried about Trump. There's he won't get in. He won't, he won't play with these guys. That's, so, that's why they're making so much problem against Trump, because he's saying, hey, I know who you guys are, and I'm not going to play. You really think that? I think that. Watch the video. Yeah, yeah, I watch he's it. talking about... Uh, 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 listen, uh, listen, listen, telling him to watch that video is like, you know, f putting fuel on the fire. <laughs> Well, you know, it's... I agree, you know... The, the, I don't agree. Just the, saying, I, I got depressed watching it. Because I thought to myself, you know what? If the world is that fucked up, you know, really, if 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 it's if this is all a sham, and and anybody since Kennedy that has been a president, they've all been members of their three organizations that they that they referenced. The trilateral wasn't one of them. There were three organizations that they mentioned: Council Bill Burke, Relations, Say again? Council on Foreign Relations, that's C one, CIFR, yeah. That's yeah, and then there's yeah. an organization. And they went through and they listed all the people who were in Obama's government. Right. There's about 200 of them. They, and they're all members of, of either the tri uh, the, uh, the, the Bilderberg Council group. Right. And they, they, they showed pictures of them and bam, in this organization, bam, in this organ, every one of them. Now, Everyone. did you believe you what you were Google watching, there. Rob? No. Huh? Sorry? Did you believe what you were watching? <sighs> so, like I said, it's I, I don't want to believe it. My, my, you know, I, I mean, I, then I start thinking to myself, well, how do they have all this? We're, these people really members of these organizations? Why do you think the Republicans are so, uh, they this hate It's not political, by the way, because they, they despise come Bush and they, and they despise Obama. So this is not a political thing. This is not a left versus right. They're saying none of that really even exists. No, uh, that really even matters. Obama and Bush and all of these guys are shills for these guys. Right. And, yeah. And, you know, well, I've talked well, about it for a couple months, but... I uh, still can't, you know, I'm not saying, but you see, I'm not saying I believe it, because they were saying, I mean, their timetable is way off. 
Obama was supposed to be the guy. He was supposed to be the guy that was supposed to make all this happening. The North America... Well, so was Carter. So, so was a lot of these other guys. Uh, uh, the uh, tr Trilateral Commission uh, uh, was... Uh, uh, who was the... Uh, Br Br Brzezinski? Uh, he was the first president of Trilateral Commission. He was appointed, by, and he was brought in by David Rockefeller. Yes. Uh, and, and who did he recruit right after the, uh, his election? It was Jimmy Carter, who became a member. And uh, where did all uh, or many of his high-ranking officials for his administration come from? Trilateral Commission, Council for Foreign Relations. Same thing with Reagan. Reagan, yes, Reagan, Reagan did. didn't, didn't, you know, said he wasn't going to get involved with these guys. But who do you think he brought in? He brought in people that he didn't even know they came out of, came out of that. I, I'm trying to think of uh, who his. Uh, it's it's really really. If you're really gonna, if you believe that, I, I can't believe it. I can't because it just cease to exist. Yeah. I will, I will. I just. How do you go? How do you get up every day? Well, you know, when I found out that you know Reagan. Uh, had the same, you know, a group of cronies yeah. and, and uh, Carter saying, it doesn't matter who gets elected. They, these people are just feeding at that trough at the expense of the American people. And, uh, and, and they want us, you know, they think they want to rule the world. So you know, what they think okay. is, yeah. You know, as long as I've been alive, yeah. there has been a plot like this constantly. Yes. Yeah, and it used to be, believe it or not, Phil, the Jews who were the conspiracy. I know, they, yeah. and, and we are. Yeah. <laughs> and we know how true that was. You know, I, I used to love to hear about that. And it was the John yeah. Birchers, your dear friends, yeah. who were pushing a book called The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. In 1958, it's not the way it is today. I, I, I don't care if it's right not the way it is today. I care about the way it was and the fact that it's still a shitty organization because it comes from those roots. You know, what am I going to say? Hey, you know, the, the American Nazi Party is not like the Nazi Party in Germany. No, no. Uh, you know, they're full of skinheads, but I don't like those guys either. But, yeah, but I mean, the John Birchers have not, they've, they've, they've uh, changed their message from time to time, but basically they've always been anti-Semitic. Well, they're not anti-Semitic now. There's a yes, lot of they are, Spanish. Phil. There, yes, a they lot of are. That 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 associate uh, themselves with the uh, thoughts and uh, programs of the John Birch Society that are of all ethnic. Uh huh. And there are blacks who are voting for Trump. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you don't like the Bilderbergs and the Trilateral no, Commission. Oh, Let's stop it. That. It's just giving me a headache. <laughs> I hope you're right, right, Alex. No. Huh? This I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I really, because there's no hope if you're not right. But I, 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 there was, there is an answer to that whole Bilderberg thing, and I've heard it, but I don't remember it exactly because it never interested me that much. Oh. But it had something to do with the fact that it's all myth. I, uh, I'm eating every year. Why? That, you know, no, that's, that, not that, that, that's not what Bilderberg is about. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're about uh, doing the same things in, in the European theater that U.S. is doing in the with TPP and NAFTA. Yeah, yeah. Well, NAFTA, you know. Well, it's it. it Clinton was oh, one of these oh, world, oh, oh, uh, one world. No, 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 no. no. The, the only reason NAFTA came into being was it was a reaction to the European economy. You know, because yeah, the European co economy was... Well, let me finish what I'm saying, Phil. You never let me finish a sentence. All right. And then by the time I tell you to let me finish, I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> the fact was that... Uh, now I forgot. No, you said it was a reaction to the... It was European. a reaction to the European Union because the European Union was threatening to be the biggest economy in the world. So we got to have our own biggest economy. And what better way than to have Mexico and Canada and the United States join forces... In, in, in NAFTA, the only down part about that was is that the Mexican economy is such a fucked up economy that actually it drags us down. Well, but that I, wasn't I, what that wasn't what that, that wasn't what uh, and, and, you know, for all you hate uh, Clinton, you got to remember Clinton was never to the left. Clinton was always right down the middle, if nothing, maybe a little bit to the right. Clinton wasn't bad in a lot of ways, but on the other hand, he he uh, he couldn't do anything straight. You know, everything had to be a deal. He was always he was always kind of nefarious. Uh, in, give in an example. Dealing. Give an example of that. Uh, uh, Whitewater. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm we're talking about him while he was president. 
or or the deal that uh, that Hillary and he made that uh, uh, they made an investment of uh, I think three thousand dollars and they got back one hundred eighty thousand dollars. But when was that? Uh, while he was president? Uh, I'm no, just before I think. No, just before. I'm saying while he was president. Okay, how about the uh, the uh, post uh, the post office scandal in the White House? Uh, how about the travel scandal in the White House? Those were those were the faults of other people. It was maybe okay. maybe their fault for not looking at it more closely. You're talking yeah. about travel gate. Yeah, and yeah. I'm also talking about. Uh, and, and, and if I'm not mistaken, the, the guy who was involved in travel gate was so upset that he he made Hillary look bad that he committed suicide. Oh, uh, Vance, uh, Vince, Vince, Vince Foster. Uh, Foster. Yeah. And he committed suicide because he had dishonored the president and his wife. And uh, uh, he, he admitted it was his fault. He wasn't the fall guy? Fall or, guys don't commit suicide. Well, uh, who knows if it was really suicide. Oh, Maybe it oh, was. Oh, right. <laughs> Stop, Phil. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, the, the, one of the other things pointed out in this documentary is that the, the whole idea of the Federal Reserve Bank is there's nothing federal. It, it's as federal as Federal Express is, is one of the terms that was used. And this bank is, is, would, would is you, not yeah. a federal agency, and yet it is, it, it, nobody can, there isn't anybody who has any jurisdiction over it. What's not the even the President okay. of the United States what? has jurisdiction over the Federal Reserve Bank. And you know they're determining wait, 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 who gets loans. They 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 control the economy. Uh, they uh, uh, make it so that nobody can borrow money. What, what's the name it, of this documentary again, Rob? Uh, the Obama Deception. The Obama Deception. Deception. Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, right? Amazon it's the only place Prime. I found it. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Um, but it was it was uh, eye opening about the Federal Reserve. The, w w Alan Greenspan, right? They I, yeah. they have an interview with Alan Greenspan where he says it straight out. There isn't anybody who can touch the Federal Reserve Bank. There isn't anybody who can legislate over it. Yeah. So who's who's more powerful? This Federal Reserve Bank, which has nothing to do with the federal government, is oh over oh wait a minute. Hold on a second. Government. Hold on a second. Hi Jeff. Ready for this one? You're going to love this one. Who directed the film, Rob? I don't know. <gasps> Want me to tell you? Yeah. Alex Jones. Works for me. I like Alex that, Jones. That, that, that nutcase who finds a conspiracy behind every, every, every wall, he has completely been discredited continually as, like, uh, like as taking the truth, is, is a taking job. the truth and bending it. There is one person on there who, when I saw him on there, I just said, oh, well, this is, and that's Jesse Ventura. He's interviewed there. And I thought, well, he's sort of our, that's a lot of sort of, uh, you know. <laughs> but I, again, it's worth a watch. And it, it, like I said, I, I hope none of this is true. If 50% if of it is true, we've got big problems. Um. It, it, uh, you know, there's always a grain of truth to, to, to everything. I, you can't make this stuff up. They were talking about 9-11 as a conspiracy. Uh, because I know that uh, Jesse Ventura believes 9-11 was a, you know, was a conspiracy uh, perpetrated by these 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 uh, Bilderberger groups or one of these. No, you know, I think I think his theory has always been that it was it was it was a conspiracy by the Bushies, actually. That they knew it was coming and they let it happen. Well, because they're members of these organizations. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Uh, it, the film claims that Obama has been carefully installed by powerful elite families and that he is deliberately working against the best interests of the American people. And every president yeah. since the assassination of Kennedy. They thought Kennedy was going to be because... He comes from a bootlegger family that thought he was going to roll over, that he was, they, they call them women, woman crazy, that he would just get in the office and, you know, roll with the punches. But he suddenly found his, they didn't give a damn about a space program, but he had these things that he wanted to do and make, you know, he suddenly found his, uh, his patriotism. And, uh, but, you know, they, they infer that. That's why he's dead. Let me uh, let me uh, let me give you a little bit of the credits on this film. The film is directed by Alex Jones. It's produced by Alex Jones. Yeah. Uh, it's written by Alex Jones. 
The production company is Alex Jones Productions, and it's distributed by Alex Jones Productions. That's called a vertical uh, a business. You know, it's, it's, it's called business. creating propaganda. Well, oh, so I, you know, I, I, I hope you know. So. Here, no. Here's what happens: if you do a documentary and you start your documentary on a particular subject, and as you're doing it, you find things out, you're in a period and a position of discovery. And that's what any good documentary is, is, a, is, is discovery, when it's uh, this kind of thing. You believe the, the Bill Burr thing let, You exists. let me finish, Phil. Jeez. Getting apoplectic. No, I mean, I'm, I'm tired of when I'm talking, you interrupt. Oh, well. You know, uh, I mean, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to make a coherent statement here to try and put things in a row. Then there's the other people who do a documentary, and they call it a documentary, but it's really not a documentary because they know what they want to say from the get-go, and they're simply presenting what they believe to be true, and they are leaving out all the things that... They, I'm sure in this uh, video, uh, Rob, there, was no, there were no naysayers there. No. Saying, hey, you know, well, there's another theory about what these things are. And I've seen stuff where they've said, hey, Bilderberg isn't that, it's this. But no, Alex Jones wasn't going to include that because Alex Jones just does advocacy documentaries. I mean, you could argue that that was the same thing that's wrong with Michael Moore documentaries. I was going to say that. That Michael Moore goes in trying to make a point rather than going in to try and discover the truth. All right? Yes. Well, I yeah, but you can watch both and form your own opinion. Uh, yeah. You won't watch both, Phil. When's but the last time you watched a Michael Moore documentary? Shit. I'm not usually good at falling for shit. You know what I mean? I, I watched this, and I, I was really kind of expecting that I would laugh at it. And then when I didn't laugh at it, I got sad about it. <laughs> well, I want a documentary to tell me something I didn't know. You know? And to... Go and show me a lot of different sides and, and look for the truth. And you don't find that in Michael Moore, and you certainly don't find that in anything that Alex Jones does. And anybody with an editing machine can do what Alex Jones did. Well, that's yeah. what I was thinking, I'm hoping. Yeah. Phil? Do you, do you acknowledge that the Bilderberg group exists? I do. I know it exists. And what about you, Alex? Uh, you know something? I have not done that much to study it to come up with a, a true analysis of it. I have heard that it is not what some people are portraying it to be, that it is a meeting every year uh, of, of business people getting together and, uh, and, and, and trading thoughts yeah. and, and things like that. Which Why? is, it, well, I mean, my wife just went to a meeting in Hong Kong where her company, Citic Capital, got all the investors together. And they all had meetings and talked about how to make things better and so on and so forth. You could easily, if you were Alex Jones, try to figure that some kind of capitalistic conspiracy to blah, 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 blah. You know? What's the secret? What? Was it a secret? You know, because the Bilderbergs, when they went to Bilderberg thing, when they go in, they have to keep what they talk about secret. Same with trilateral, same with council and foreign relations. Well, a, lot, a lot of times there are organizations that want to keep what goes on in that room secret so that everybody feels they can be forthcoming in those meetings without having coming coming back to haunt them. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Meetings? Well, yeah. I, I'm always the kind of, uh, I'm very critical. I'm trying to be a critical thinker. I try to look at things from both sides, and I hear too much stuff that the first, my first intention is, I don't have, I don't believe ever what I heard, and let's see what it's really about. And a lot of the stuff that you're listening about, I, I kind of mentally forgot about this stuff from 30 years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, quite frankly, it was, it was the same old story. Um, uh, and from what I hear today, I, I always like the fact that, well, this is why Kennedy got killed and, and this stuff was going to change except when Kennedy, uh, decided to become a different kind of president and, uh, and they kind of like add stories to kind of make it more, yeah. uh, interesting, but they really have nothing there's no commonness to the whole theory. And uh, I pretty much these days, I kind of, 
Ignore him. Let me ask you so, though. So. Uh, okay, let me let me let me tell you something. Why are we suddenly getting yeah. a uh, uh, feedback there? We're at Yankee Stadium. Uh, yeah. Oh, now it's gone. Okay. That the, happens sometimes. The, the, just what, a point, yeah. and that is that they were showing a clip of Hillary at um, at a book signing in a bookstore, and and a reporter with a hidden camera mm -hmm. walks up to Hillary and puts a book down, and and then he says to her, uh, "I understand. Didn't you attend uh, uh, the Bilderberger meeting?" and she mummed up right and and why is i mean if it's nothing why this okay. why that you I, know I, I, handling well, it that because way? there may be a uh, there may the be way. an unwritten uh, thing that you don't say what went on there but let me let say me, what you let on. me yes, do this I was there uh, and that's it what what did they talk about this year do you know uh, they don't talk about Rick, probably uh the breaking up of uh, uh england you with, know uh, but, but how do you know they talked about that uh, I read something about it. Oh, uh, well, if it's so secret, how come you know what they talked about? Something leaked. I'll tell you exactly what they talked about this year. Current yeah. events, China, Europe, migration, growth, reform, and vision, and unity, the Middle East, Russia, U.S. political landscape, the economy, growth, debt, and reform, cybersecurity, geopolitics of energy and commodity prices, uh, precariat and middle class, and technological innovation. And if you want to find out more about what they talked about and a list of the 130 participants at Bilderberg, you can go to www.bilderbergmeetings.org and you will find a list of everybody was there. How secret is that? And I went to that site last night and I looked at this guy. I see where you're at and I was there last night looking at this. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so how secret is it? You know, it's secret up to a point. Jeff. Well, on the list of all the things that were going to be discussed at this meeting is very interesting because from, from our perspective, I've heard all of those little parts on Gala, uh, on our show here mm -hmm. over the last year. Everything has been discussed by us. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in there that's uh, unique, that is unexpected, that is unusual that we haven't talked about? You've been talking about it, Phil. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Tony? Uh, but uh, not, it's not, it's a secret information. Wait a minute, Tony has something he wants yeah. to say. Yeah, you know, this, I love like the whole secret society thing. I, I'm in your camp. But it isn't I, a I secret society, you. Tony. It isn't a secret society. I have a list here of all the people no, who I, were I there. Did. But here's what I'm saying. This is what I think, really. Mm -hmm. I really don't think the government is controlling what we really think. Because, like, even with NAFTA, my take on NAFTA is, yeah, he did sign a bad deal, potentially. But let's be honest, that was that was probably the beginning of the Internet age. Either way, I don't think the government is as bright as we think. Because if they were, they wouldn't be asking Apple to break open the phone for information. Mm -hmm. right? Snowden had him over a barrel. I think what happened is NAFTA would have probably happened anyway, because once they, they didn't anticipate the web, Opening up so many areas of business. Did anybody see Amazon 30 years ago putting every brick and mortar store out of business? This was going to happen whether they were going to do it or not. I think the government just doesn't like companies getting so big that they can't control them. The, tell me, the companies, the technology companies are the ones that are running the country. Do you, I don't do you know one of the people? Trump have anything to do with it. You know, one of the people at, at Bilderberg was one of the, uh, one of the people attending it was Chris Hatfield. The Canadian astronaut. Wow. Yeah, people from all over. Uh, even yeah, that yeah. Uh, Farid, uh, whatever it is, from uh, CNN, he's a member of the Council on uh, Foreign Relations. They got people in media, they got people in government. Well, Sicaria is not listed here. Uh, no, he's on Council for Foreign Relations. Oh. All I'm saying is for a secret organization, it ain't no secret. I, I, I just can't, I don't think the government is as powerful as we think. I think. You're putting in your mind for that, oh, they're really going to make things happen. Well, let me ask. No, me they're me. really not. They're going to try to control people or make problems for big companies that yeah, get too big. They're talking about global trends. And well, the Bill would have lost, the, NASA would have happened without Clinton. He just tried to get in and pass something, I think. If you know what the trends are, then you can be in front of the rest of them making your investments and, mm -hmm. and getting more power and getting more money. But they don't, I don't think Obama or them are that bright. That's what I'm trying to say. They're just part of the group. They don't have to I be. I don't that. think they're as powerful as we think. I think it's in our minds that they're powerful. 
I think they're the ones who need help when they have to solve a problem. Well, I don't know. I hope, I hope. Phil's wrong. <laughs> I, it's, I find it interesting on this whole thing now. And I'll be wrong, wrong, too. If wrong, I Phil. I'm wrong too. I really do. You know, I, I would I would love to see a, an honest world where where people you know get ahead because they work hard and and uh, and and they, and they are good people. Uh, not people that are doing things that are nefarious and mm -hmm. and and backroom deals, but that's just you know it seems to be the way the way it is. You know, See, I think it's like Alex said. Remember what you said, Alex, a while ago, that they want you to think like the government wants you to think. Vote for me. The, you you work forty hours a week. You do this. The American dream. They're trying to sell everybody a bunch of pile of shit. Let's well, be honest. Well, what they're saying, it's going to be haves and have nots, well, and listen, they don't want to tell you that. To be honest with you, what what the, what, the way you the way you, um, you know, I used to be. Uh, I, I almost went into advertising instead of radio. Uh, I did wrote commercials and stuff for radio stations, and one of the biggest agencies in the country came courting me, wanting me to go to work for him. At the time, it was, uh, I think, it was J. Walter Thompson, which is one of the biggest agencies around. Because yeah. they liked the way I did commercials and the spin I put on them and the way in which I presented them. And I turned down the job because writing copy and writing commercials and coming up with commercial programs, literal uh, advertising programs for people, came too easily to me. I wanted something hard and broadcasting was hard for me. So I didn't do it. But I did learn a lot about how you sell a product. And what you do, how you sell a product is you create an insecurity. And then you come up with a cure for that insecurity. You know, I used as an example the fact that you could do a commercial where uh, there was a, for, a, for a new product called Good Ice. And what it was is the commercial is a woman uh, talking to her mother-in-law and saying, gee, mo mother-in-law, uh, Bob always says my ice cubes are too cloudy. And uh, she goes, well, there's a cure for that good ice and then you show a bottle of good ice right and uh or great ice and you you look at uh, you know it's a bottle that says good ice on it and then you use this to make your cubes and they come out clear and the last thing is of course the husband going hmm great drink great ice you know what you do is you create an insecurity that nobody ever had before you know, vaginal odor was a good one years ago. I mean, how women discovered they had vaginal odor was beyond me. Did they have to bend over and smell it? You know, but they provided a solution to it, which, by the way, gave them all kinds of like uh, flora and fauna problems down there. But you, you take a prop, you take something, you create the problem, and then you supply the solution. And that's exactly what Trump is doing. He well, is scaring the shit out of people with myths that he's going to cure. You know, it's the old mouse, you know, cat outside the mouse hole routine. It's the billing, billing of the cat again. But what he's selling is a fear of stuff that really doesn't exist to the level that he makes it. And then he is the solution. And it's, it's an old tried and true method of advertising. Uh, and um, in the case of this Bilderberg thing, Rob, you saw the documentary, it scared you. And then last night you went to Bilderberg.org, and you, meeting.org, and you, you looked at it, and then you had a list of everybody who was there, and you had a list of all the things they were talking about, their agenda. How did you feel about that when suddenly you saw what it was? Well, uh, did you I'm, feel I'm uh, not always a trusting soul, and a website can be a website and yeah. say whatever the hell it wants. Um, but would a really secret organization be that forthcoming about who the membership is? Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, if it was all that Alex Jones made it out to be, would they be listing what they were going to talk about? Well, but you don't know if that's really what they're talking about. Right. Well, you can get that paranoid about it, but what all I'm saying is they're hardly a super secret organization. They're not like... They're, they're not like the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, the Masons. Well, and, you know, the Masons, you won't, you know, that, that's secret stuff. That's really no, secret Oh, the Masons aren't doing anything nefarious. Oh? 
No. Aren't they? If you listen to some people, they are, right, Jeff? Jeff's given a smile on this Some one. people think they are. It's an wait, 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 I'm talking to Jeff right now. All right. Uh, Jeff, say what you were going to say. Well, I think uh, some people think that the Masons are somehow running the, the government. And they can uh, start that what, by what, George but, Phil, Washington was a, a Mason. Phil just gave you face. But Phil, yes. you should you don't say that you don't give face to the Bilderberg it's because so you hard. want to believe like that, but you probably know some Masons, so you don't want to believe that. And he does know Masons. I know. Even though know people in the uh, uh, what is that uh, Scientology uh, that you don't like. But uh, oh yeah, they're a great organization. They're really I, good. They I'm, enslave I'm, their I'm, people for crying I'm out loud. With the Masons. I don't like these quasi-religious organizations, uh, but uh, you know. They're, they're not the, doing anything. The Masons they, aren't a quasi is a bunch of crap. Uh, they they talk about the death of Hiram. I forgot his last name, but that's an allegory. It's not a real person. And 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 what it is is it's putting uh, these uh, traits, uh, uh, killing off these negative traits and adopting positive ones that will make you grow as a person. You know that that's they're not doing anything nefarious. Uh, but if you if you take things out of context, uh, like the death of this uh, Hiram, I, I, I forgot the, what, what the what the guy's name was that they supposedly uh, you know is the is the allegory symbol that dies when uh, when you move up in the organization. But it's not a real person, you know. Well, I wonder why why you want to believe some things, but you don't want to believe others, because there's no really no difference between the whole myths about the Bilderberg as there are about the uh, the Masons. Oh, well, I know more about the Masons than I do. The you Bilderberg. don't know enough about the Masons because if you if you did, that person wouldn't be in the Masons anymore. Yeah, I had a pretty close friend who was in the Masons, and he was a pretty he was a really good guy, but he wouldn't say a freaking word about the Masons. No, they, you know, volunteer work, you know. A lot of Masons were also uh, in a, in a different order. The the ones with the the, the funny well, hat. Well, uh, it's uh, uh, the Scottish uh, right, the Scottish right. Well, no, but you also had you know anytime there are these secret groups, there are always all kinds of myths that rise up around them. And yeah. I, the one that comes to mind is what Harvard Skull and Bones. Yes, Harvard Skull. Is and that Bones. Hall, Is it Harvard? Yeah. yeah. Skull yeah. and Bones. Yeah. Uh, you know that's supposedly oh you know every. Pre people have been made pre president out of being at Skull and Bones. I think Scott was Yale, Yale anyway. Right? Huh? Yeah, 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 I think it was Yale. Yeah, oh, Yale. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Scottish Rite and the Masons, they do, they do public service. They're, they're, they're not out there to... to sort of biker gangs. gangs. So do biker well, gangs. That's yes, because exactly. they, want a better, they want a better rep, and they're tired of the cops. Well, coming. maybe that's the same with these other groups, you know. <laughs> uh, look, you know, all I'm saying is that when any organization wants... To, you know, they, they they hold these meetings and they keep what goes on in these meetings secret, but they keep them secret because they're a private organization and they want yes, to keep it that way. They want to keep it that way. And there, it's not that they're plotting. It's just that they're, a, they're, they're a, an organization that doesn't want to be out there and they don't have to be. They're not a they're not a public uh, owned corporation or a government run body. But what's private about uh, the Bilderberg? These are our government officials. These are. Uh, I didn't see one government official on that list of people going to Bilderberg this year. Uh, what's, uh, I did uh, see um, the. I, I saw the the mayor. I think of Amsterdam. So yeah. they don't all go to every meeting every year, and and uh, they they get invited to certain meetings. But according to this documentary, everybody in. Obama's cabinet is a member of one of those three organizations, and they and and they flashed it well, on the what, screen. What, what is that club in uh, in California that uh, meets up near the Russian River every year? Uh, my, yeah, the my, my um, friend of mine belongs to it. Yes, a friend, a friend of mine's dad belongs to it. Yeah, and Kissinger used to go up there every year for their yeah, summer um, camp. Yeah, and they got a a, a good the Grove. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying to remember the name Grove. of it. Anyway, Bohemian Grove. Bohemian, Bohemian Grove, exactly. You know, I have a friend who belongs to it, uh, uh, Buddy Love, who's a musician, and he got, went up there and was, became a member because he was a musician. But yeah, presidents, that, presidents have been members of the Bohemian Grove, and all kinds of things have been uh, brought to the feet of this group because they're so secret about what they do every year up there in Bohemian Grove, which is basically act like a bunch of children.
I know my yeah, friend's no. dad is a musician as well, and uh, yeah. well, he's a real estate agent, but he, uh, but he's also a musician. And yeah, and they put on, they put on plays, and they do all. You know, it's a summer camp for adults, and it, for, for rich uh, uh, adults, and and you have to be asked to be part of it. So presidents have been part of it. Kissinger was part of it. Used to go up there every summer and spend a couple of days. You know, and, and they really live in and they up. they live in these uh, in these. Uh, 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 what do you call it? dorms or whatever? Not dorms, the shacks, and you know they they get to like live out the life of being a kid again. Didn't Kissinger party like it's 1984? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, listen. Today is Jeff Stein's 71st birthday. Oh, happy birthday! Yeah, no, thank you. and uh, he is uh, 71 years old. I don't like it when anybody says I'm 71 years young. No, he's 71 years old. Why don't we start giving a certain respect to age, you know, instead of denying it, right? Now, uh, and, and Jeff is lucky because Jeff is living a long life and he's had some, some problems over the years, right? I think I'm the, uh, the famous guy that uh, is a million dollar man, you know? Y yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If, uh, How many spare parts? Use technology to stay alive. Which normally, otherwise, I would have not. My father died so that uh, many people could live that had your operation. Uh, he was one of the first 100 to ever have a bypass operation in 1972. Yeah. But uh, they didn't know much about clotting and uh, clotting medicines at that time. And about 10 days after the successful operation, he got a blood clot and died. Uh, and so what was once a very experimental uh, operation when my father had it, is now uh, routine. Yeah, but uh, on the other hand, number one, he, as you say, helped people like Jeff to live a long life. And secondly, your father was going to die anyway. So this was an opportunity to try and save him, which didn't work. Right. You know, well, he was 44. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's so the, the, the last uh, major procedure that I had uh, was started, I think it was uh, five, six years ago, only for old, old people who were almost going to die anyway. Really? And, and you know, that's where the uh, medical societies or whatever say, you know, what are we going to do? We, we've got this theory. Uh, it seems like it works, but we have to do some uh, experiments, okay, and, uh, or studies, if you want to call them. And and the first thing they do is well, what's where's the way we're going to start it? Is it going to start it on the easiest person or the most difficult person? And in that uh, procedure, they start with the with the most difficult people, and and very luckily, it worked incredibly good mm. uh, for the worst people and. Uh, and, and when I say the worst people, it's mostly because there were people who were 90 years old and, and, and above. And, and uh, now a, a youngster with me, like 70 years old, I can have those procedures and, and go home the next day. Yep. And, and yep. that's great. Well, it's kind of like we were talking the other day about cataracts. You're going for cataract surgery now. Did you, did you say, Phil, you had to have it? I need one uh, yeah. soon. Uh, they said it's not. Oh, I right. know. I know. It was. It's. It's uh, Jack that has to have it. Yeah. And I told Jack. I just said, you know, it is so simple. It's ridiculous. You know, yeah. it takes the doctor 15 minutes to do the procedure. Then you wear a cup on your eye overnight. You go in the next day to make sure it did okay. And then you come back in three weeks. Somebody I said, told me and, they change the lenses every it, uh, so so many years. No, they just changed the lens. Uh, yeah. I'm talking the about. next time you're going to have to change the lens, you'll probably be dead. But uh, uh, and they I've had both of my focal lenses now. I had both of mine replaced. Uh, and uh, in the old days, if you went to have that operation, it took hours, and then it the, re, the the it took like three months to recover. You had to sleep on a block thing that so your head wouldn't move at night. I, I mean, it, it, so so when you sure. figure that to now, yeah. you know. Is the same thing with Jeff and, and his procedures. Bypasses are, I mean, I hate to say this, it's kind of like getting a tooth pulled. You know, they, they, they have a procedure. They know what works. They do it. They give you the drugs that are going to not prevent any complications. And most of the patients who have a bypass live. 
Hell, they're passing out bypasses like they were candy these days. Yeah. Maybe too many of them. Was your bypass, Jeff, uh, uh, one of your own uh, arteries that they uh, replaced, or did it was it a pig artery or something like no, that? No, no. What uh, the valve that I had is the aortic valve. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as compared to people who had heart attacks, and uh, when they have heart attacks, it's usually because on the outside of the heart they don't get enough good uh, right. blood going back into the heart. Yeah. Uh, that's not what. What'd I you have? Had. A stenosis. Yeah. Yeah, I have a stenosis, but it's mild. It's a mild stenosis. Right. So the valves, you know, I was born with a, with a valve, and I would almost suspect that it was, during birth, was not exactly designed properly. Yeah, did Dead you, did you, did you have heart murmurs all your life? I think so. So it wasn't cholesterol? Well, I, the first time no. I remembered about it really effectively it, 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 is it, I was like 20... Three years old, and I go to a doctor, and he goes, "Oh yeah, uh, you're probably going to need an aortic valve replacement." My brother had the same thing. Yes. Yeah, by the way, by the way, all you young people out there listening, thinking you're listening to some old people talking about their heart problems. How old were you, Jeff? I was uh, in, uh, 25. How old was your brother, Tony? Uh, my brother's. Uh, he was 48 or 49. He had the same yeah. valve, Jeff. Yeah. 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 We didn't even know it, Jeff. What happened is. I was, I'll tell you real quick, we were working out, I, I was helping him work out at the gym, and he was doing a cardio class with me, mm -hmm. he just passed right out, I, I picked him up, I thought he was having a heart attack, so they called the EMS, and it was a nurse there, so they revived him, he got up, and he didn't know what was going on, but we rushed him to the hospital, we didn't know what it was, I thought he was just having a heart attack, That was a and then when they did the things, they made me have a check, Jeff. They did a scan. Yeah, but I thought it was a birth defect. But well, I, was, I guess I guess the point I'm trying to make here is oh, these things, which were once very complicated, yeah, routine. Are, are routine. Um, uh, you know, you didn't have a bypass. You had a, a stenosis. As I say, I have a mild stenosis, and he keeps an eye on it, but it hasn't changed. You know, most people my age will get a mild stenosis. But when you get a really big stenosis, they've got to go in there and, and replace the valve. Yeah. And well, the nice part is today they could put a valve in in an hour. Yeah. Isn't yeah. With, with only a small it's, it's an, it's, incision through the groin. It's actually it's more wow. of, it's more of a uh, uh, you could say it was a hardening of the aorta, but it's it's kind of a stiffening of the aorta. I think is maybe the best way to put it. Yeah. They yeah. they they the problem is that you know they're valves. Your heart is turning to stone. So they <laughs> so they're supposed to open and close. And, and the problem is if, if they're stiff, they don't close properly. Right. They, they also don't, don't open. Right Luckily, now. I go to a, my, my uh, regular doctor is also a heart specialist. Oh, and he, uh, so every, every year he checks me to see if he does a little, uh, 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 not electrocardiogram, uh, uh, what do you call it? The scope. Oh, it's a sonogram, with, I can't yeah. remember what they call it. And uh, he checks it out. He says, nah, it hasn't changed. You know, right. he said, this will probably, you'll probably go on like this forever, but we'll keep an eye on it just to make sure. You know. He also checks at the same time. He can make sure you're not pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well my father had was a, was a blockage due to cholesterol, but I guess now they could have done an angioplasty uh, and uh, not, uh, not have to replace the, uh, the. Yeah, you can do that little roto rooter thing, and then you go back to eating all the steaks you want. Yeah, well, it's yeah, too. Yeah, there is an effective rotor rooter uh, procedure, but it's not exactly the most uh, popular thing. I think yeah. today the the best thing is that that stents have actually uh, really enhanced people's lives. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. rather than having uh, bypass. Yeah, surgery. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, anyway, you know what it is? Uh, I just realized uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're getting towards the end of the program here. So, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me see, where's this other theme? Uh, hey, this is not, we haven't had a lot of people tonight, but we've had a, this has been a good discussion tonight, good solid discussion. We've actually had five people because Jeff's uh, wife, um, uh, yeah. uh, that was Pam, a uh, uh, joined us uh, at one point and uh, was quite verbose, so we had two for one. And then, of course, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Always terrific. Love talking to you, Phil. You're 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 an asshole, but I love you. And uh, Tony, uh, you're Tony, and I love you. So anyway, that's uh, it's pretty much uh, 
Yeah, no, hold on a second. I got to kill something here. I got to kill a, a little something that I. What is it? Where is it? Cop now? Huh? You a cop I, I, now? Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, have, <laughs> no, I have to kill. Uh, I had to kill something. Anyway, uh, we should have talked about that today, but. You know, talk about Monday. There's some video. Oh yeah, oh, Monday. Monday, got the, the Monday, it's well. We'll talk about that Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Anyway, give us a call Tuesdays, Jeff. And I want to hear what you think about the debate. You too, Rob. You too, Phil. You too, Tony. Good night. Good weekend. Okay. Bye bye. That's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. That's all she wrote for the uh, uh, for the uh, ramble. And we will be back again on Tuesday. And yes, we will be talking about. What went on at the, uh, oh, wait a minute, hold on a second, got to change my camera angle. There we go. Uh, we'll uh, be talking about what went on at the, uh, at the debates. In the meantime, uh, stay tuned for a repeat of the intersection, and uh, we'll see you again on uh, Tuesday. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her.